Hi, this is Frank Taylor with the Wednesday, May 20th edition of Nature in Your Backyard. And I'm in my backyard and I'm trying out a new microphone that I used when I was featured on a WDBJ7 uh, local broadcast on Roanoke that actually turned up in, Roanoke, in Richmond as well. And this was a microphone that was recommended to me by the news reporter. So here we go. Today I want to talk about, again, this last week of school for, for many of you, or school's winding down, and I'm really focusing this week on things that you can find outside and you can identify for sure, for sure, for sure. And then I'll go back to this lot of cool stuff that I find that you might be able to find. So um, Monday, we looked at millipedes. I know you can find millipedes around your house. Yesterday, we talked about fleabane, and I'm pretty sure if you haven't found fleabane yet, you'll find it today. Today, I wanna to talk about two plants, again, that you'll find in mowed lawns. As long as people don't put uh, herbicides down or fertilizers that also have weed killers in them, you can probably find both of these growing in a lawn near you or local park or a field or on the edge of, of a forest. So the two plants we're gonna look at today are wild strawberry and a sort of look-alike called Indian or mock strawberry. The wild strawberry is a native to the United States and it's the probably one of the really the original strawberries. The Native Americans that would lived here before the colonists would certainly have ate these because they're good to eat and rich in vitamin C and they taste great. Um, and then our colonists uh, surely use them as well. Um, from what I understand, and Google check, fact check me, look up the exact story. From what I understand, the strawberry, the cultivated strawberry that we have today was from a crossbreed between a Chilean strawberry and, uh, and our Native American strawberry. Um, check that out. I think it was during the 1800s in France, a botanist bred those together, and that is the uh, origin of the cultivated strawberries we have today. Now, a lot of people will say that the wild strawberry has the best taste of any strawberry you've ever had, and that the taste is more concentrated. That may be subject to debate, but you'll have to try it yourself when uh, these... Uh, um, start to fruit on, on the local vines. A lot of uh, the uh, plants that we eat today have been crossbred to bring out characteristics that are desirable for maybe shipping, for storage, for selling. So, so they might breed some strawberry hybrids so they'll have a really bright color. So when people grow, go to a grocery store, they'll buy that. Or they might breed strawberries um, to ship well, because you know if you have a great tasting strawberry, but it 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 doesn't make it to the market, it doesn't make it to the grocery store shelf. That might not be a good thing. Some of them might be bred crossbred for their size. So wild strawberries are just native. They haven't been crossbred. They haven't been selected for any other characteristics. They are just what they are. So they're really fun to go out and try sometime. But if you're a kid or a student, make sure that you have an adult check it out and make sure that um, it is a true wild strawberry. Because um, for every you know good plant that's out there, there's a lot of toxic plants. Just because it's in nature doesn't mean it's safe. And as we, you watch my videos this year, you'll, you'll learn about that too. Wild strawberry. So the other strawberry we're going to find, whose leaves look just like wild strawberry, is called Indian strawberry. So Indian strawberry is also called mock strawberry. And its scientific name, which I have written down here because I'm not really great with scientific names, is potentilla indica. Potentilla is a word that means powerful or potent. And indica refers to the country of India. And in fact, this is not a native species. It's a little bit invasive, means it'll like spread and grow uh, really fast. It might crowd out some of our native species. Uh, potentilla indica was originally believed to be from South uh, Asia, Southeast Asia. Um, maybe not exactly India, 
but uh, that's where the scientific name comes from. The scientific name of our wild strawberry is Frageria virginia. And uh, Frageria is Latin for uh, strawberry, which has been around since Roman times and used and eaten by uh, various peoples. And um, the name Vir Virginia usually refers to plants that were first identified when the settlers came to Jamestown. And I might need to be corrected on that, but if my memory serves me right, a lot of scientific names have a genus and species. The genus name is the first part of the name. The species is the second part of the name. And they have, they have the word Virginia in it as the species name. And that's usually, uh, that's often because we use that criteria to determine what is a native plant. Do we have records of it at Jamestown? The settlers brought with them a naturalist to document the species of plants uh, and animals that they found here that might be potentially have economic value because Jamestown was set up as, a, as basically a business venture by a, by a company. So let's talk mock strawberry again. So mock strawberry, Indian strawberry, is said to be trifoliate. Tri, like a tricycle. How many wheels does it have? Three. So trifoliate, folia means leaves. So trifoliate means it has uh, three leaflets. And you'll see the three leaflets on both the mock strawberry and the Indian strawberry uh, when I show them to you. The big difference, however, while the leaves look the same, the wild strawberry has a white flower, the Indian or mock strawberry has a yellow flower, and the mock strawberry apparently doesn't have any real taste to it. It doesn't have that strawberry uh, flavor. So let's go check out these plants. I'll show you some videos of them and see if you can't find them in your backyard today. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's a make this basic. There's a dog. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of restrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's So I'm here in the lawn and look, I saw a white flower with a yellow center. And it's right here in my grass. So let's check out this flower. And first let's count the petals. One, two, three, four, five. So this one has five white petals. Let's look at this one and see if it's the same. One, two, three, four, five white petals. And here is a leaf. How many leaflets does it have? One, two, three. It's trifoliate, like a tricycle. So this is wild strawberry. Here's a, a good view of a wild strawberry leaf. You can see that it has a hairy stem and the leaves have little dents in them. We call that serrate. So that's, uh, serrate means toothy. So those are like little teeth on the edge of the leaf. So wild strawberry leaf, here they are for you to uh, uh, learn to identify. So when you go out to your yard, look for a five petaled white flower in the grass, and that is wild strawberry. And if I don't mow this section, and I've purposely not mowed some of this so I can show you some of these plants, um, you'll be able to, or I'll be able to, find the strawberry and uh, try them and see how good they taste. So I have to tell you, after walking all around my property looking for Indian strawberry today, I couldn't find it. So um, what I did find, however, was the look-alike in at least the flower in being yellow and the leaves that are serrated or, or toothy. So take a look at this and hopefully if you watch my episodes you'll recognize this. So here is a yellow flower with five uh, petals on it and the leaves at first glance almost look a lot like a wild strawberries, don't they? But when I look at the rest of the leaves, check this out. How many leaflets? 
One, two, three, four, five. French word for five is sink. This is sink foil. So right now, when you go outside, you should be able to find sink foil blooming. And if you didn't see my episode on sink foil, check that out. Um, you should be able to find the wild strawberries. And walking over here, here's a wild strawberry blooming in my grass. And you can see the trifoliate leaf here. And right next to it is a flea bane from yesterday's episode. And here's a lot of flea bane blooming. And over here, I still have some violets that are blooming. And we talked about these violets uh, before. And you see how the flower hangs um, at an angle? Well, the nectar is way, way back in the very, very back of this flower. And see that little pouch right there? And when a bee lands on this flower, it's directed into it. It has to flip upside down and reach the nectar all the way in the back. And that way, it bumps into the pollen-carrying parts of the plant, and the plant gets itself pollinated. Hope you enjoyed today's episode on nature in your backyard, wild strawberry and mock strawberry. You, I showed you wild strawberry, but um, I couldn't find mock strawberry today. It'll probably show up here soon, and I'll do a video on that. So you can see that in my yard, there's lots of plants, and there's lots of plants you can find. And I want you to go out there. I want you to see if you can find some of the things that we've looked at this week, like millipedes, um, flea bane, wild strawberry that's blooming now in southwest Virginia, uh, and some of the other plants like sink foil with its five petal, five leaflets that uh, I did in an earlier video. If you haven't seen that episode, check it out. So my goal this week is to keep showing you stuff that you can find as school winds down. I want you to have success and find these things that I can find. And then next week, man, I've got some cool critters to show you. One is a longhorn beetle. And my longhorn, its its antenna are three times the length of his body. The Texas longhorn steers ain't got nothing on this guy. And then I also found this amazing stonefly, which looks prehistoric. So we'll check those out next week. And I'll tell you those stories too.